Okay guys, for today's episode of Vehicles Greenville, I'm reviewing the 2019 Buick Cascada with with Mr. Steve yet again. And this is possibly one of the one of the best looking convertibles in the entire game. Just oh. Uh thank you for that wave, Mr. Steve. No problem there. This pro this actually there's there's two different trims and this the and these are the only ones. Mine is the more expensive one with the um, I think it's called the Sport Touring, and yours is the premium, premium, which, in my opinion, looks way better. Cause I really like the combination of red on beige. That's the sole reason why I decided to get this vehicle because of the interior and the fact that the red on beige, like you said, looks really good. Kind of reminds me of like um a 2000s Ferrari. Don't know which. Yeah, but but way slower. Yeah, this thing is really slow. Under the hood is a 1.65 liter inline, 160 horsepower. Well, actually, 200 horsepower, um, inline four cylinder, which actually sounds like a V6, mind you. It sounds very much like a V6. And uh, yeah, so today we're gonna be reviewing these convertibles. Now I'm gonna start with the, the with the premium because I just can't get over the looks of it. Oh, are you okay? Yeah. I just sneeze. I'm sorry about that. It's all right. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this? I really like the beige interior because it gives a more luxurious feeling, like premium quality like thing over a black interior. But that's just me. I mean, I could say the same. I think I honestly think that the black, the black, the black, the black interior like just gives a little sign that it's more sportier when it's really not at all sporty at all. Not even close. What, uh -huh. what else are your thoughts? Really, just like um, the chrome grill is not my type. I would definitely uh, find a way to swap out the grill for a different one because I do not like chrome at all. All but right, that's just me. So here's my so here's my interior. It's not really all that special. It's literally just all black with the chrome dashboard and a chrome stick. Uh, th yeah, there's literally that's literally all there is to it. But I really like that the infotain the infotainment system just shows up as soon as you step in. That's really cool. Also, the lighting is red. But that's actually my favorite part of that about the sporty this quote unquote sporty version. It has red lighting all over it. That's pretty cool. Uh, and also the light it has DRLs, which actually look really pretty. These these DRLs actually look really pretty. And if I and if I go to the lighting, which which was the thing that I um, mostly cut mostly talk about with these cars, the, the lighting's okay. I mean, I get that it's a new that it's, this is also in this is this was also not around for that long in the game, so that's why I decided to review it since it was it was since it was an also since it was also added in an, in an update. Oh, by the way, Steve, can you just turn it into? day again i don't like reviewing in the dark this is this is your server not mine oh is it oh let me change that yeah now since the uh the exterior and interior thoughts are already finished let's start with a little sound test and the the sound test really isn't all that special considering it just contains a single exhaust let me, let me try that again it's really not that special Make that a turbo four cylinder. I I I noticed something. Every review, every car that I reviewed ever since Vog came back, always had a turbo. Like yes, yeah, particularly strange. The the Genesis, the Lincoln, the S60, and now this. Um. Didn't I don't think the 370Z had a turbo, didn't it? I mean, your Nismo did, but mine did not. Uh. So it has a rev limiter at around 4,500 RPMs, but it, and I can't even I can't even rev it in sport mode. It, go, it only goes up to 1,200. Uh, let me try. There's no there's no manual transmission, so it's so it's only available in automatic. So there's no way it could actually rev it. But it's it literally it's just literally a V6 sounding four cylinder thing. Now let's let's. Let's this this is probably gonna last a while, but let's go to the speed test. 
Alright, so for this speed test, I'm, my light's on, thank you. I'm gonna do it in first person. I'm actually gonna race um, Steve side by side to actually see which one is faster. So, are you ready, Steve? Let's get it. Alright, on my third honk. Oh god, terrible launch. That was really underwhelming, to be honest. Yeah. 60 in about 8 seconds! Oh god. Alright, what's the top speed? Here? Ouch! Oh no! I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's, re let's redo that. Alright, let's try this again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That took way longer than 8 seconds, in my opinion. It's pretty slow. Oh god. Oh, we're, now we're in, now we're in trouble, uh, Disney. It's a 6 speed, excruciatingly slow. Yeah, it's a 6 speed automatic with a turbo charge. Ouch. Again? Are you kidding me? I mean, at least I hit the top speed. At least I hit the top speed. At I least I at least I hit the top speed I, and I got a flat tire. Lovely. So the top speed on this thing is actually uh, very underwhelming as well. 142 miles an hour for both trims. And Steve, you're driving like an idiot. You're gonna hit a pole. Oh God. Oh oh oh. Here we go. I just did it. Uh, let's do a hundred <laughs> miles per hour braking test. I want to see how bad the braking is. I haven't hit hundred yet, so leave me a second here. Okay. This probably has. <gasps> oh. oh. <laughs> you stopped in the middle of the road. I couldn't get around you. Sorry. You could just use the other lane, but otherwise, the braking is actually way better than I expected. The. The cars that I reviewed ever since Vogue came back had horrendously bad, bad braking. Let's see how this thing turns since it's a front wheel drive drivetrain. Turning could could be a fix, but in my opinion it's pretty it's pretty decent turning. Now, oh, here we go. This, this car, in conclusion, is overall really nice, really nice looking, but very underwhelming performance. Just, oh my god, I actually want this trim way more than I, than I, than I actually think. Are these cup holders in the middle of seats? Uh, maybe. Uh, let me see. Uh, may, uh, Those look like very, cup holders. Very non-functional looking cup holders, like very useless. Yeah. And I really want this black grill. Instead, this chrome one. So I think I mean, it'll really like I think, look better. I think I think the black rail was only acquired for the sport trim, since you know the yeah. they call it they call it quote unquote sport when it's literally it literally has the same exact performance as this, extremely slow, but actually a pretty good top speed of 143 miles an hour. Uh, this car is something. It's something. It has. Bad acceleration, but good top speed, and overall good looks. And the turning could be a, f in my opinion, the 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 sound the sounds could be fixed for because this does not sound like a four cylinder at all. It sounds like a it sounds like a six cylinder ripped off of like a Dodge Avenger or something. Especially with the yeah. turbocharger. And it's a six-speed auto with no manual transmission, which is a little upsetting. Because I kind of hoped... I, when this car first came out in the update, I actually hoped a lot for there to be a manual transmission. And, and for it to be like all-wheel drive so it could have better launch in the sporty trim only. Since, uh, since you know, it, since all-wheel drive is really all the, all the sportiness... All the sportiness you need for this kind of vehicle, but front wheel drive for both trims? I'd had I have to pass on that. I'm sorry, but Steve, tell me why would you keep this? 
Honestly, I just kind of like, you know, quirky cars, and this is definitely one of them. Definitely something I never thought Buick would make for the North American market, as, you know, it's kind of weird looking, and convertibles are not the rage in America, but mostly like SUVs and trucks, but that's just me. And I've also noticed something when I gonna, I'm gonna say this again, but when I but when I put the top up, the entire car looks like a giant jelly bean. If you just look at it closely. Yeah. So overall, the lighting's good. The performance is yeah, 50/50, and the looks are amazing. So, um, overall, this gets uh six out of ten. Wouldn't really, wouldn't really review this again, because this is such a slow car. This car is unbelievably slow. But you really get moving once you pass like 75 miles an hour, only halfway into the speed limit. But anyways, in conclusion, this is, this might be a good daily to some of you, but in my opinion, it's. It's very it, it's a very underwhelming car. It has good looks, but it just it's just I'm not even going to question what you did. <laughs> um, let's just say I turn into an Emily who drives a Jeep and ran over a curb and now my tire's flat. Oh, okay. Uh the the turn signals I actually never noticed are actually pretty they're, they're good on the back, but they're not good on the front at all. They're good on the side as well. I mean, the side could use some work, but uh, definitely the back is like, what? Oh my goodness, this thing looks so bad when it's flat. Anyway, but yeah. Anyway, so uh, that concludes today's review. I decided to record this outro at night since the lighting, the cars actually look really pretty at night. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys want to see more car reviews in, in either Greenville or Southwest Florida, as I said in the last video, then comment down below your suggestions for either game. Because uh, for the summer, I'm actually planning to do more videos in Southwest Florida, aka some roleplay series ideas. So anyways, if you want to see that, please subscribe to my channel with notifications on. And with that, me and Steve will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.